how do filmmakers create memorable action characters? Is there actually any real life example on it? Yes, there actually is. What's more surprising from the example I'm going to talk about is that these three characters have relatively short screen time. Considering that their film runs at around 150 minutes mark, all combined they don't speak more than 20 words and lastly they contribute very little to the story. But when I walk out of the theaters, which is odd since I was just a middle schooler back then, these characters are what I vividly remember about the film. They're the highlight, they left a lasting impression on me and they perhaps will be a guide for me on how to create an action character. And so how does Garrett Evans manage to make these legendary action characters? The first one comes with the weapon choice, a unique proficient weapon choice that become their main weapon. Hammer Girl like the name with her hammers, Baseball Batman with the bat, and the assassin with his karambit. Rarely do they got to hold any other weapons beside that. You might also notice how these weapons are weapons that we associate with daily life, becoming an irony as the villain turns into the lethal weapons to kill people. But what is interesting is how some of the weapon choices is actually rooted deeply into the philosophy of martial art itself. Aside from agricultural use, the Krambit is a well-known weapon within the Minangkabau people and now widely used as a weapon in Pechaxilat martial art. During the colonization time, many Europeans recounted how the fighters would use Karambit as their final resort when they lost their primary weapon, which is a very great nod to how the assassin decided to use the Karambit when he was at disadvantage against Rama. The choice of hammer is an acquisitions as well. Garrett Edwards wanted to feature the Silat Harimau or Tiger Style Pichak Silat in which the user hits the opponent with the palm of the hand while the fingers are kept in a claw-like position. Yet to differentiate with the one he had shown in Marantau, Edwards wanted to find an extension where the weapon could be used. And the only thing he could think of is the claw hammer. The primary weapon that its character holds, as well as the irony that it could be such a dangerous tool already sticks out. Yet I found the most interesting part is how Evan associated the weapon with martial art philosophy. Perhaps the audience watching the film don't really care, but it's a great easter egg for an audience like me who wanted to know about the thought process behind it. That inclusion actually made me think of wow that's so cool and it sticks with me years after the film release. If you think about it more, we remember Thor because he wields his hammer Mjolnir. The Kingsman become popular after Colin first Galahad fight with an umbrella. Recently as well, John Wick was widely known for his extensive use of guns. Sure, the characters I mentioned have a lot of screen time, especially the main characters in the film. But looking at the raid characters, I think it's a great way to make a character that possess fighting skills becoming memorable to impress the audience. By the way, before moving on, consider giving this a like and subscribe if you like the video so far. And so moving on to the next point, costume design also played a very big role in making this character live in our head. I believe you encountered a thought about why cartoon characters usually wear the same outfit in every episode. There just seems to be no logic on wearing the same costume every day. While it's true that it's to make it easy for the animators, it also serves as branding. When we see the character appear on screen, we instantly recognize the character partially through the costume design that they use. The black and green pattern worn by Kamado Tanjiro. Red button t-shirt with a straw hat are known by fans as Luffy. The blue exotic dress with a tiara on her head of Princess Jasmine. Or even the yellow and blue singlet with the letter U and E are from the Bill of Open and Open series. You get my point, and this does not need to apply to animated media only. The assassin already stand out with his bald hat, wearing a black leather jacket to feel mysterious. Baseball Batman seemingly emphasized that more by having Freddy 3 Ulysman, the actor, wear a hoodie every time he fights. But Hammer Girl takes the trophy here with her white dress and leather jacket accompanied by her shades, showing her as a beautiful, sadistic devil that kills her enemy with no mercy using the hammer. Every blood splatter through her dress just adds to the beauty of the fighters itself, making the choreography feel alluring no matter how gory it can be. This is later modified in her fight with Rama as she wears a black leather jacket with her navy jeans, but nevertheless still give a similar feeling thanks to the leather jacket and her white shirt. You could see that without changing much of the appearance, audience can identify with them easily. 
Not to mention that what they wore made them look so cool, making us want to imitate the action and fashion. Which brings me to the last point, that the action peaks. If you count only the extended fight sequence, the assassin have three fights. <laughs> Baseball Batman have two. As well with Hammer Girls. In such a short appearance, these three characters need to make strong impressions so that the audience can remember their existence in the film's world. Everyone and the cast did that successfully by making the action itself as a dialogue. We remember them not because how they speak, but because of every swing of their weapon delivered to the enemy, and somehow we also create the character based on their fighting style. Hammer Girl loves to deliver gracefully brutal hits to the enemy, while Baseball Batman is the one who loves to finish the job quickly, and the assassin stands opposite as he enjoys tormenting the enemy into beasts first before giving the final blow. Especially the assassin, I really love that without any dialogue he was written with great characterization, only through his small movement or how he loves to fight, just like Mad Dog in the first film. Actually, that's also why Mad Dog made a great impression on the audience. Despite not having any weapon, his long hair as well as his demeanor on giving hard, aggressive attacks to his opponent while enjoying every bit of it makes him stand out in the raid. That is to say that there are no bad action executed in the raid, and that's what made the raid, despite not being a character-driven film, have such great character in it. Because the cast and crew had all thought to give the character personality throughout the choreography. Dagu who fought with Rama and Wahyu in the narcotic club, the four gang members Rama encountered in the hallway, supporting characters who appear several times, important in solving the story but never to be revealed the backstory. It impressed me as I could remember who they were and what they do in the film. That's why I think the most action film seems to feel flat for me. They perhaps have a character in the cinematography playing with the sound but almost no focus on the action itself to define that character. They never dive deep on the backstory that makes them perform the action with their style when the times come. I think that's also the reason why a lot of martial artists who once got breakthroughs in great action films always turn out to be mediocre when starring in other films, especially when they enter Hollywood. Tony Ja after Ong Bak, Jet Li, Jackie Chan. Even I felt now that Iko Uwais is just being underutilized now post the raid because the action he appeared just felt myth doesn't really show him in his prime. Being directed by people who want to make action films but don't understand what makes an action great. But that doesn't mean that I have lost hope on these stars. They have potential to carry on, but they haven't had the opportunity to find great action film that is able to translate their choreography into a memorable character. I do wish that perhaps this could be a lesson for screenwriters or directors to actually research about the martial art itself first before shooting the film. Trust me, it turns your action films into memorable ones. Start writing and designing your character. I hope that I give you some valuable information from this video and maybe you can apply it later in your future films. If you have watched this video until the end, consider to give it a like and subscribe. And that's it everyone, I'll see you next week. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening and good night.